Hey there everybody and welcome back to the next video in this playlist where we are reviewing a ton of different codeless application development platforms to see what may be the best for you. Again this is based on pricing features and a ton of other things so as I've done with the other videos, I'm reviewing one solution at a time and basically going through creating a trial, covering pricing, the different features, etc. So today's video is going to be pretty quick. This is on something called Swiftic. Now, this application looks like it's more of an e-commerce based mobile application builder. So it's still codeless app development. I won't spend too much time on it, primarily because it looks like it's catered more towards individuals who maybe are entrepreneurs creating or running smaller businesses. Um, so there's going to be some limitations here. So we will be we're on the Swiftic website right now. I have a trial account I'm creating in the next tab, but let's just go through some of the options here. So you'll see that they have a solution for small businesses. So you have retail and e-commerce, restaurants, health and beauty, and professional services. So they have a couple of different categories, which means you may have some limitations as far as what you're actually able to work with. Good thing is they have some payment solutions built in, but you may have some limitations as far as templates. So you'll see down here, you have the app creation details, and then there's a video there. Um, so you can see the basics. Let's go to the pricing tab real quick. Now for this, you'll see right now they're running a uh, supposedly running a 30% off sale. So for that, I'm not quite sure what the pricing looks like outside of the sale, um, but it looks like the pricing could change for you depending on when you're going to actually view this. I'm going to be posting this video same day, so if you look at the date it was posted, you can kind of compare to your pricing at whatever date and time you're looking. So you'll see monthly $39 a month, yearly $33 a month, two years $29 a month. I don't recommend people jump into a two-year commitment for something unless they know for a fact it's going to work. Test it out monthly for at least one to two months. Make sure they have the features you want, and then jump into the commitment if you want to. So let's go through and see what's actually included with your benefits. So it doesn't look like they really have any different plans here. So basically, you have one plan across the board. And it does look like they're supporting Android and iOS because they list right here Apple App Store charges 99 annual developer fee and Google Play charges a single time fee of 25. So it looks like they're going to be helping with posting to both. They do have a hire a pro option if you just want to unload that project on an individual and just kind of let them take care of things for you. So I went ahead and I clicked create app and I basically just typed in an email address and a password. So let's enter in an app name, we'll just put test. And then web address, we don't have one for this, so we'll just click next. And then we'll click next here, no website. All right, so you'll see the options that we have by default. So if we were to click on professional services, you'll see the background changes, restaurant, so it looks like right now all we have are background images. It doesn't really look like they're giving us a template, so to speak. So let's just click on professional services and see what options are available. So we have jumped into the editor now and we're going to click start. So it doesn't look like they have a skip option. So we're just going to have to go through this real quick. And then we'll click done. So my app features. So we may want, let's just say, a scratch card. So we'll click on that. You'll see it's automatically added to the application. I love that it updates in real time. That's a huge benefit. So we'll just rename this test scratch card. And we'll click create scratch card. And you'll see you have a heading option, message option. So we'll put message and heading just to see where they appear. And then odds, let's make this 100%. And we'll put surprise. We don't, I think we'll need a prize image. So let's see if we can just upload a default image from a previous app I built. And we'll just click OK. And then unlucky cards it looks like it's not going to allow you to have an unlucky card because of the percentage so if we chose 90 um, those odds will update here 
and then let's just click add. All right, so you see you can set the code for confirming customer scratch cards. You can also download it as a QR code. So this adds a layer of security so customers can't just scratch off all their information as much as they want and win. So we'll just click set. And then you would basically click here to scratch and then you'd type in the code. So we'll put 1931. And then you'll see heading and message. So this would basically say that they won something. So we're going to scratch off. I'm just clicking and dragging around. So you'll see you can click get my prize. So um, kind of a cool thing there. I mean, honestly, I love the scratch cards for those of you that may want loyalty perks so prize redeemed so you can set up additional content here but i don't want to stay on this specific feature too long so let's just click save and then we will go to style and navigation and see what themes are available here so let's try out urban studios so we have all of these options in this order and let's choose a slightly different layout so i like the larger buttons personally so we have style set up but again, you have these options up here for themes. And then down here, you have your navigation layout. Here you have your style. And then you have your app background where you can add an image. And then you'll see down here, you also have your app icon, your launch image, which is like a splash screen, your app name and language. So I love this layout. This layout is incredibly user friendly and reminds me a lot, honestly, of the way that uh, Appy Pie is set up. Now. Let's go ahead and add another feature. So you will look through. So these are the recommended options. But if you want to click on all features, we'll scroll through and just show you what they have. So you'll see most of these are based around someone who probably has like their own business, like a restaurant or something similar. But they do have forms and a store as well as news, video, and a map. So you'll see you can also add in a web page if you want. So they have a couple of different options, which is nice to see. So we'll click HTTP semicolon slash slash www.google.com. So we have added that in. We will click save. And now we'll click on the drawer up here. So this is our home page. You have your scratch card here and our web page here. So it doesn't look like that's loading in the preview, but not a huge deal. Now let's add a, let's just say a book and appointment option. And you can choose your appointment booking. So let's just say Schedulicity, I believe is how this is pronounced. Could totally be wrong there though. So we will add that feature. And then we will go, let's see, maybe we want a new feature. So you just click on the next tile and we'll choose what feature to add. So let's uh, see if we want to add an engagement option. So we'll add a news section. So you can add your feed URL, auto refresh, update all of your settings, and you can add different tabs for your content. So that's kind of cool. If you want to add a news site, and you can also change the layout. So basically you add your feed URL and details. If you want to add another, let's see, just to try to get this away. So it's not going to get any posts primarily because that's not a feed URL, but we're just going to type in a couple and then see what these different layouts look like. So it doesn't look like it's going to allow this to work for us, but you'll see there's two tabs here. So if we add another tab, then you have three tabs. So basically each tab is going to be your news feed URL and you'll have all of your information here so we'll put tab one tab two and tab three so it's kind of cool if you want to have the news portion set up you'll have the three options and you need a feed url here so google.com we'll save that again and then we'll go back to the home page so you'll see in just like five to ten minutes we already have a scratch card set up we have a web page set up, the booking appointment, which you would have to set up through one of those third party sites. And then we have the news feed with three separate tabs. All we need to do is update the URL to get that changed. And if you want, you can also change the layout to show this information in a different way. 
So kind of cool that they allow you to add that level of, um, we'll just say granular controls. So we'll click save here. So I think at this point, just so I don't go through every single feature they have, I'm just gonna show you the feature drawer and tell you why I think this is a great platform. Now, if you're looking for something basic for your business with really, really easy to use uh, interface, I would highly, highly recommend this. A, for the price, the ability to lock in that price for two years or so, because app builders can always increase the price over time. Now, I also recommend this because they have a ton of features and functionality. And as you can see, not only is this incredibly easy to use, but they have quite a few different features if you're just looking for a basic application builder that gives you pretty solid control over the themes while also allowing you to make things quickly. So if you want something that gives you total control, you are not gonna be able to build the application this quickly because you're basically choosing the themes, the settings, and everything else. This builder, it seems like they give you control over what you probably need control over while streamlining everything. So for example, you have this style and navigation up here. You have a ton of control over the layout and the colors, but if you decide, you know what, I'm not, I don't really care about all that right now, you can just skip it. It's not forcing you to, but the control and the features are there if you need them. They have pretty solid features for anyone who's looking to run their own business. Um, so overall, I think that this is a great application builder. Would definitely recommend it, and you can always go into... Um, you know, kind of see all of the options over here, but you have the option to promote, you have push notifications, analytics, there's the manage option, and then to market, and then obviously edit app in your dashboard. So if you were to click on to market, this is where you're going to activate your app and submit to the different stores. So you'll see Apple App Store and Google Play. So uh, this is basically everything I wanted to cover in this video. Again, I don't want to show every single feature, but I would say as far as ease of use, this is one of my favorite application builders. As far as overall features, if you're not looking to build something for a business, this may not be the best builder for you. But if you're an entrepreneur or a small business owner, I think this would be a great option for the price, features, and functionality. Now, if you're looking for something that's gonna allow you to grow and expand over time, I can't speak to what features they will have, but again, this primary use is appears to be for small business owners, entrepreneurs, people looking to sell things and have less of like a socially engaging application, more of one that's designed for e-commerce and things of that nature. Now, if you have any questions, as always, don't forget to drop them in the comment box below and I will see you all in the next video.